Welcome, welcome, welcome to our YouTube broadcast. I got cameras everywhere in here. We're looking around the room and trying to find out where I should be staring. Um, thanks for uh, thanks for popping in today at Two Guys Take on Real Estate. I'll be joined in just a minute with uh, with Matt over here. He's the other guy from uh, Two Guys Take on Real Estate. Work today. We're going to be talking about house hacking, um, which is something that everybody seems to really, really love to learn more about, and especially if you're a younger person, asking our, us our first piece of advice to get started. Uh, in real estate, that's probably one of the things we're going to be telling you. And we would have done with, uh, if we could do it over again is to start off by house hacking. It's a amazing uh, a springboard to success in real estate. So we're hoping the folks over on uh, TikTok are going to find us here and jump in to the live stream on YouTube. And welcome everybody from YouTube. We love to see uh, people popping in here saying hi. Feel free to comment. Uh, and drop the uh, drop comments in the chat. We do see them. Uh, we love it when people click like on our lives and subscribe to our broadcast. Those kind of things are going to help more people uh, find our channel. All the stuff we give away on YouTube, all of our video content is completely free. So please uh, take a second, drop a hello in the chat. Uh, I see Ja Rule. I love it. I recognize your name from uh, Ja Rule from uh, last time I think we were on. I got a younger person there. That's awesome. Uh, and then Aaron, hey, hey, thanks for popping on, Aaron. Joined here by Matt, the Landlord Ninja, also from the uh, from Two Guys Take on Real Estate. Uh, awesome, awesome, awesome to have so many people here and on TikTok checking this out. I hope the TikTok people click the link in our TikTok bio to find us on YouTube stream, where we got a lot of people hanging out in the comments section saying hello. Uh, we're talking today about house hacking. Guys, I'm telling you, this is easily one of the most popular things that we talk about on our channel, that one of the biggest things that will help you massively accelerate your path in real estate, um, which is uh, why I'm really always just super excited to be talking about this. Yep, stuff. exactly. Completely excited. Uh, each one of us actually have been uh, house hacking for a little while. Sure. And, and uh, it's really helped also offset uh, the biggest thing is your expenses. And that's it's one thing that, you know, increase your income. And if you have a regular job, that's great. But there's very little you can do to kind of increase that income it's there. crazy. And the thing is, right, that's just the biggest thing people tell me every time we talk about this. People are like, it's so hard to go out and, and, and buy a house and, and mortgage. What else you got? Well, you got your uh, taxes, taxes, insurance, insurance, there's water bill, utilities. So, yep. There's so it's cost so much to operate a, a property, operate a house. Yep. I can't do that. I just I got to wait longer. I got to stay at home longer with mom and dad. What? Well, you know? or that or that, you know, they want to stay renting because they don't want to also have the expense of Repairs, capital improvements, roofs, yeah, stuff yeah, like that. Which, 100%. Yep, it, and I get that. It, it's uh, it's a scary thing, and it, it, it's a big uh, commitment. that I Often people think, you're like, oh, I'm buying a house. Yeah. They don't always factor in, even if it's brand new. Yep. Like we were just talking to some investors that we were going through some houses, right, and right, they're right. like, oh, we want brand new stuff. And I'm like, that's great. This, and they're like looking at this house that was built in 2010. And, it, and in, in, the, in the New England, that's pretty new. I mean, a lot of houses are in the 1700s. <laughs> when we first met these guys, they were like, oh, anything, uh, this is really, really old. I was like, no, this is pretty, it's not really, it's pretty much how they all are. Yeah. Yep. And I was talking to him and I'm like, that's great. But just so you understand, that water tank, which is the original water tank, that's over 12 years old now or you know, 11 years old. That's past its life expectancy. Yeah. You know, The roof is already now a third or a fourth through its life expectancy. Right. Uh, so the furnace is at the end of its life expectancy. That's okay because everybody has 15, 20 grand just laying around well, maybe, to throw a new roof on when, when yep. they all of a sudden have to. But the bottom line is that's how a lot of homeowners operate. Exactly. Yep. That is true, and a lot of them do that, and they're, they're, it's hard for them to know and anticipate that stuff, and then all of a right. sudden they're uh, kind of SOL when oh. it happens, and they're either driving into like a HELOC, get that money out of there, yeah. borrowing it from someone, yeah. or dealing with uh, a roof leak for a long time. Yeah, and I mean, honestly, we see this all the time, guys. If you've been watching our channel, learning about things like wholesaling, you know I love to watch for big blue tarps covering roofs as I'm driving down the road. And that that right there uh, it could be an example of somebody who didn't budget properly for the last 15, 20 years. And I'm not saying, you know, lay off the Starbucks lattes, save your money <laughs> and budget like that, but set aside whatever percentage, a couple percent a month uh, yep. for your house payment uh, to going towards fixing that roof 10 years from now. Exactly. Yep. Um, and, and it's so, so important. So analyzing a deal before you go buying a property to house hack is incredibly important and clicking off checking off all these little categories like putting aside money for would you call it capital improvements. capital improvements uh and and jump into the chat if you guys and people on tiktok if you haven't jumped onto the youtube stream please find us over here jump into the chat if you want to know some other examples of capital improvements that you need to be thinking ahead on uh, if you're going to house hack 
Yep. So, uh, I mean, so basically what we're, you do, we're talking about house hacking, we'll get to some of these questions as well, is that uh, you're looking to find a house. Uh, it could be a multifamily. Uh, so you could look at it generally between a uh, two and a four family house. Uh, and you could also use a, a single family house. Sure. And you're looking to basically rent out other areas that you're not utilizing. I, that, that's a good that's a good explanation. Yeah. So bottom line is, guys, buy a house with some extra space in it. Yep. You know, rent out that extra space. Cover some of your operating expenses. Come cover your mortgage, your taxes, your interest, your yep. utility bills. Uh, maybe depending on if it's metered or not. Uh, yeah. How it's metered. Yep. So I want to go through. I'll go through a quick example of what I've done, uh, and just so you guys can be familiar with it. So I actually went and found a foreclosed property uh, that I wanted to buy for myself. So I bought a distressed property uh, at a foreclosure auction. And inside that distressed property, there was a walkout basement. And uh, at some point, uh, it looks like it maybe was a dance studio or something. There was like a ballet bar and there's mirrors up on the wall all over the place. What kind of dance do they have there? Yeah. I don't know. There was not a pole dance? in the middle. There was not a pole in the middle. Well, actually, there are two. Ah, oh, see, and, and so stage. now the story is getting good. Stage. Tune uh, in, okay, people. Right, Stay right, tuned. <laughs> I want to hear more about the dance studio Matt has going on at the dance studio he's got in his basement. Wow. I got to hear more about this. Yeah, you, you've been there. I've not been there like that. I don't uh, <laughs> don't start rumors here on the internet. This is how these things get started. So, uh, so what I like to do is I, I uh, renovated the second floor and I, I, I moved into there. But also at the same time, I was renovating the first floor with the thought of doing something with it. I wasn't sure uh, if I was going to rent it out as a uh, space, like a little business, possibly like a daycare, an in-house daycare. That was an idea that was floated. Uh, so that would bring decent income in there. But that's a very active business. Mm -hmm. uh, or the other idea was doing an Airbnb, which is very popular right now. Oh, big time. Uh, a yeah. lot of people are doing it, especially on TikTok. Uh, there's a lot of you know uh, videos about Airbnb blowing up right now. So I wasn't sure really what uh, so mind you, I'm in Springfield, and I wasn't sure how the market was where it Airbnb. Sure. There wasn't yeah. a lot of other Airbnbs out there. Right. I, I really had no idea if it was do well, and really, why would people come to my house to rent in the Airbnb? I don't know. You think people have to? You have to stay at least fifty yards away from most people, don't you? Wow. All right. No, 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 no. Moving on. Kevin. Rumor. Another rumor. <laughs> so uh, basically, we renovated it and set it up as an Airbnb, so a uh, little short uh, short term rental. And it actually has been worked yeah. out really, really well. Uh, it brings in on average probably about fifteen hundred to eighteen hundred dollars a month. Right. Who's gonna, that's profit, and that's what I was doing. Down. You know, uh, my wife doing the the turnover and stuff like that, which isn't that bad. And actually, often we're getting and we're seeing more and more is longer term rentals in Airbnb. And I was actually reading an article from Airbnb CEO. He was talking about how more and more mm -hmm. uh, Airbnbs are actually becoming longer term. And when I say longer term, they might be three months, yeah, four like, months. Maybe a semester. Like a, a year. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Somebody is looking to use it for- uh, some Traveling type, nurses. Yeah, traveling nurses, a, a semester of school, yep. um, some kind of a contract work in the area for- uh, 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 We're labor. just locking in, uh, we locked in someone for the next seven months with the two students yep. that are locked it in for the next seven months. Nice. So that's fantastic. I mean, that means no turnover yep. and it's pretty much kind of set it and forget it for the most right, part, right. Uh, which is fantastic. And uh, uh, that you know easily covers my mortgage, and uh, then I just have far less expense of the house. Yeah. So that's kind of the general concept of a house hack uh, from a single family perspective. And there's a lot of ways you can do it. The often the other way we often talk about here on our channel and on our TikTok is using a multifamily. Yeah. Where since you're living there, so you're going to live in this unit, you can actually qualify for an FHA loan, which you can put a you know, very low down payment of about three and a half percent. Right. And I mean, that's, I mean, I don't fall asleep at your screens, guys. I know we're talking about financing a house and a property. It sounds super boring, but this is actually really, really awesome stuff because everybody thinks that they're just going to have to really work hard, have awesome credit, come up with this huge down payment, maybe get themselves a single family home, but they'll never have a chance, never have a chance. At a multifamily house. That's for rich people that, you know, can afford the stuff. They've already had single family houses, but well, not with FHA. Well, yeah, but also I think often people think they're focused on, well, I, my first house has to be a single family Start house. off with a single family. You family. have to start with yep. it, you know, and then eventually buy some, you know, rental property. It, investment properties when Honestly, you're older. Sure. I say that's a bad idea. If I start all over, I would have bought in probably a, honestly, a four family house because yeah. I, I want the more the merrier. Yeah. Uh, more rents coming in, the better. I would have. 100% done that. Yeah. I would have moved into a four-family house, yep. bought that. That would be my first starter home. 
I would have, you know, done some, you know, a value add. I would have, you know, renovated the units myself or, oh, sure. you know, hired out as much as I can, uh, build in some value. I would have put a HELOC, so a home equity line of credit on there. And then I would have rented the other three units out yeah. that would have covered my mortgage and then some. Yep. So now I'm living free, probably putting money in my oh, pocket and like have a whole bunch of uh, equity yeah. in the you got You got enough money extra coming in probably with a, for a car payment. Exactly. Right and I then mean, And think about that. And that's that just uh, hopefully if you guys are paying attention, I just want to recap that because okay. that's going to turn people's entire idea around of the idea that you have to start off by maybe hopefully, you know, working hard, buying overpriced single family house and then not having a lot of free money uh, available at the end of the month because every every dollar you're right. spending is going into that house and saying maybe eventually if I don't even know how, but I'll try to buy an investment property. I'll work. My five year plan is to work and save, work and save to eventually get an investment property to rent out. And in just 30 seconds or however long we were just talking right now, you, you completely turn that around and say, start off with the multifamily. And what empowers you to do that is the same loan, the same loan that you chose to use for the single family and an FHA loan. Those things work not just on a single family home, but up to four units. So when he said he wants as many as possible, the more the merrier. That's exactly what we're talking about. He yep. didn't say eight unit. He didn't say six because that's where they stop it. Oh, they, yeah, exactly. they cap it out at four. But a four family house live in one apartment. Chances are, if you're watching this broadcast uh, or if you're a younger person, you're thinking about moving out from mom and dad's or maybe you just moved out, you're renting. You're moving. Your first step is to go rent an apartment somewhere. Uh, so that's essentially what you're looking at doing. You're, you're going to rent an apartment in that four family house. Live in it. Just move into the single uh, this, this four family house now. Right. Live in it like you're renting. Rent out the other units. There's some, And he said value adds, which I love. But I'm also, I'm also all about how I can make more money on a property. How can I make that property perform a little bit better. So I had a couple of ideas um, yes. of what you might do in a multifamily property that allows you to maybe make a little bit more money, maybe even adds an amenity to the property. You're talking about washers and dryers. I'm talking about washers and dryers. Uh, people aren't going to walk around in smelly clothes all day like I do. They're going to wash their clothes, right? Yeah. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> no, they're going to wash their clothes. They're going to want to have a washer and dryer. Now, you're not going to want to have those in the apartment units themselves, usually. Uh, no, we. I think you're actually doing some showings this weekend that prove why you would not want big that. Big time, big time. It's, like, you can, it's almost like I've seen this stuff before. Like, I know what I'm talking I, about once in a while. A little bit. Once in a while. Every, every now and then, a blind squirrel finds a nut, is what they say. Well, I would say set up a laundry room in the basement in a common area coin ops, uh, something along those lines. Yeah, exactly. I, I also personally, if you can kind of quarantine that off in the basement. So therefore there, cause they're also often a mechanicals and stuff like that. I'm just going to shut this up. No, no, actually do that. Don't do that because uh, it's actually helping with the lighting because yeah. Okay. No, 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 I changed it. Okay. Sorry. I'm just trying to get all the other, other stuff off the screen too. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, so <clears throat> Basically, um, if you have a basement, I would recommend quarantining it off so that the laundry room, they only have access to the laundry room because often there's other mechanicals down there that you don't want people messing with. You don't with. want people messing with the important – what is this in a basement that's so important that people could mess with? What's really? down there? Let's see. The um, boiler, the gas lines, the, the water boiler. lines. I mean, have we not had someone steal uh, hot water from what people? What could go wrong? What could go wrong, Matt? Why are you so paranoid? What could go wrong with a tenant having access to a heating system? Oh, let's see, uh, hot water tanks exploding going through the roof. I'm seeing these chat comments, uh, and I see Victoria just popped up. Pipes, hundred exactly. percent pipes. Yeah, you know, you know some, you know somebody that's going to be looking to make a little extra couple of bucks is going to steal all the copper. You know, I mean, ideally not if it's occupied, but yes, ideally you never not. know. Yeah, that never happens. No, no. no. Um, I love uh, speaking of comments. I love that we have a, a lot of activity over here on the that's YouTube awesome. comments, folks. If you're, I see the TikTok cameras going over there on the side. If you're. Uh, if you're checking us out on TikTok, please find us over on our YouTube channel. You can do that by clicking the Stand With Me link in our bio, and uh, you'll be able to find, pick through there to find the, uh, the so YouTube actually, channel for us. So we have a, uh, Aaron's asking if I asked a question. Yep, yep, yep. What's up, Aaron? So Aaron's asking, a uh, houses in New York City are so expensive. My biggest issue right now is mainly building more capital, so I have, uh, I have leftover capital for renovations, upkeep, and vacancies. All right. I mean, that's a great question. Or, I mean, I, what you're talking about there, a statement actually, but... Well, it's because it's the first part of his question. Okay. Well, how do I do the second part? It's right below it. Just go, go down. There it is. All right. Talk about building capital fast. Uh, besides wholesaling, since the wholesaling market is so saturated over here, correct me if I'm wrong. So wholesaling uh, is... I don't think it's saturated. I think it's actually... Um, 
most wholesalers, and uh, this is kind of a little off topic, but yeah, yeah, a little bit. Well, let's we'll get we'll, let's let's get in a little bit, and we'll get back. Okay, sure. Uh, is that I think most wholesalers are just not doing it right. They're not really hunting down deals, yeah. and most there's a lot of wholesalers out there, but. They're generally, you know, uh, they're, fly by nights. They're selling that bar low. Uh, they're out there taking a swing at it. They, they they do a hack job of it, and then they quit, and move on to something else that they think is going to get them rich quick. Yeah. Right. And so, honestly, I like the fact that some people, uh, maybe if I contact somebody or knock on a door and I talk and use a wholesale strategy, I like it sometimes. And <laughs> somebody's like, you know what? Somebody else already asked me about this, and I already. You know, and I like it because clearly that other person was unsuccessful. Yep. And I, I can, close deal. yeah, I can use, I can kind of dig a little bit. I'm like, oh my God, I'm so sorry you had to deal with that. I hear that every now and then. Find out what went wrong. Yep. And then I, I know right there what's in front of me to fix. Oh, I agree. Exactly. I mean, I, that is often a good approach. And this would be a good way to actually find a deal. So you can wholesale to sell, but you can also wholesale or go hunting distressed property, which is what wholesaling is basically for yourself. Right. Uh, and, and find that, you know, two, three, right. four family to do the house hack. Yep. And uh, like Aaron was saying, that it's hard to actually get all that capital. One way to talk about doing it is utilizing the Burr strategy, which we talk about here as well as on a, a TikTok a lot is, and that's how we started, you know, this whole business is we started with a duplex. Essentially, we, we didn't actually live there, but we used the Burr strategy and it's the same concept right. if you're going to do a house hack with it. Uh, that you, if you find a distressed property, whether you're going out there hunting deals through wholesale, or you're going to wholesale. Yep. You're now going to find that property. You're going to work with maybe a hard money lender, all right, or a private lender. Maybe you, you know, know a friend that's looking to make a you know nice eight percent return on their money sure. um, because they don't they're worried about the stock market crashing or crypto crashing, and so they're happy to actually put it in something a little bit more solid like a real estate deal, mm -hmm. especially if you want, found one where there's a lot of equity built in. And now you're putting that value in. You know, so uh, that would be a great way for you to get in with little to no capital. Uh, absolutely right. Absolutely right stuff. We actually started the we're using the Burr method before it was even called the Burr method. And uh, if you're not familiar with that, make sure you've liked and subscribed to this live feed right here so that you can go back when you have free time and check through some of our other videos where we yep. talk a lot about the Burr method. Uh, so right now, though, we're talking about house hacking and we have so many people that are that are especially younger folks that uh, reach out to us on all of our different platforms and they say, geez, what would you do differently if you were younger, if you were starting over, if you were 20, whatever it might be. And I say, man, that's exactly what I would do. I'd be learning about and trying to execute an awesome house hack. Yep. Uh, we got a question from Weston. Awesome. Let's take a look. Hey, two guys. I'm a freshman in junior college, currently saving up to invest my in my first home. When I get to senior college, I want to buy a multifamily home, possibly one in that categorizes as a commercial property. How do I go about doing this? How do I get approved for the loan as a student? And what are your recommended? You're just sneaking in like six questions into that thing. That was uh, that was sneaky. I like what you yeah. Did. So um, this is not exactly. Um, so if you're going to go house hacking, typically you won't use a commercial loan. You're going to use a residential loan. You're going to live there. So you'll get a better rate. Uh, but a commercial loan, uh, if you're going for a commercial property, yeah. so there's two different things. So I should do a whole video on it. So when people talk about commercial property, it depends. There's a lot of ways that often you're thinking like a business, like yeah. a shopping plaza or um, industrial building, something like that. Right. That's sure. considered you know a commercial property. You know, you're putting a business in there, you're renting the businesses. The other type of commercial property as well is anything with five units or larger. Right. That's also from a bank's perspective also considered a commercial property. Right. And that's when you're gonna generally go get a commercial, commercial loan. loan. Sure. And often right now you're seeing 80% LTV, so it's loan to value, uh, maybe even a little higher than that, depending on the local bank that you're working with. Um, I would recommend if you're looking at, like as a student uh, and you don't really have obviously the income to help support getting a, like a co-signer for that, uh, is actually looking at what's called non-recourse commercial loans with a portfolio lender. Yeah. Um, this will actually allow them to evaluate the deal. So basically, you'll probably pay a higher rate, maybe shorter term, maybe it will be a 15-year note or a 10-year note um, with a balloon payment at the end or something like that. But you'll basically look at um, not having to you know, sign as a personal guarantor. Or, you know what, partner up with somebody that or, does have access to money uh, or the ability to, you know, a down payment or get a loan. Yep. Um, and, you know, that structure your partnership around that. 
Yep. You know, certain percentages, uh, depending on who's doing what and who's bringing the loan, the money and things like that. Maybe you're going to live in the property and uh, help manage it, that kind of thing. Oh, yeah. I mean, honestly, that brings up a whole another video that we should really do a topic on. We're bringing up video topics. Partnering. Yes. Well, I was saying partnering up with someone. Sure. How do you determine value that person brings? Because yeah. often I think the biggest mistake when partnering up with people is everyone's equal. It's never everyone's equal. I mean, everyone brings something different to the table. And you need to find what that value is. And then, of course, putting it down in writing. Even if you're best of friends, uh, you want stuff in writing. No, for sure. Because you never know when someone's going to try to pull a fast one on you. Uh, yeah, wait, wait a second. What? Uh, awesome. Let's move on to some of the comments. And yep. we want to get back on the topic. Remember, guys, the topic of the day is house hacking. We have so many people that, uh, that ask us about this stuff, especially younger folks. Uh, so if you're on TikTok and you're wondering what we're shooting over here, we're on our YouTube live stream. What's up, TikTok? I see you back there. Uh, take a second. Find the Stand With Me link in our bio. Click around till you find us over on YouTube. So do you meet all your tenants in person? Do they have your content information? So, I mean, once again, we're talking about house hacking, so we're going to kind of tailor it more to that. But when yep. you're uh, getting um, tenants in a multifamily house and you're living in one, I would personally recommend um, not letting everyone know that you're the owner. I personally would have a management company. That's fine too. You could do that. I mean, that's a way to go. Or uh, you, when it didn't, you didn't even have to have a management company. Even structuring in the LLC or something like that, and the LLC is the uh, the owner entity. Right. I mean, so to, just to elaborate a little bit, I actually did live for quite a while in a uh, one of our multifamily homes that we, we all owned together, and I lived in one of the apartments, and I never really dealt um, – I mean, not really, really. I didn't dealt, uh, deal directly too much with tenant issues and stuff right. like that. People knew if they had an issue with, you know, bill paying or a charge on their account or any real maintenance issue, um, they had, a, you know, they had to follow our, our laid out procedure like any other tenant would. Right. Um, so I would say in the vein of keeping this on the subject of house hacking, either, like you said, have a, have a management company, you know, servicing your apartments uh, that you're renting out. It does cost a couple bucks per month to do that. You're paying it out of rents uh, paid. So it's money that, you know, comes in is what's paying the management company. Um, however, you could also just simply um, early on establish the type of relationship your tenants are going to have if you're going to self-manage your multifamily home. Say, listen, don't please don't come knocking on my door every time you have a problem. Don't leave me freaking sticky notes or post-it notes on my door. If you need something, you know, email me. This is the way I, I want to be contacted. You know, set it all up. And uh, you don't have to do it in kind of a jerk way, but you're doing it in a way in which it helps them understand having a good procedure is, again, something you put down in writing. Um, reducing everything to writing is going to be a good common theme. You're going to hear a lot from us, but that's that way. I mean, you're going to avoid and say, you're going to avoid so much frustration thinking like I put a note on your door and I didn't get it. It blew away in the wind, yep. you know, and you're going to deal with a lot less frustration where somebody's knocking in the middle of an episode of whatever TV show you want. Oh, and I think the biggest thing I've always noticed is when you, they think you're the owner, know that you're the owner. They, not everyone, of course, but often it creates a, and when any money's involved, it creates an odd us. dynamic between you know human beings. Us versus and, them. Yeah, us versus them. Um, oh, they must have lots of money if they are renting out the apartment. Even yeah. though often, I mean, there was an article just now about small landlords, and small landlords, someone owns it, owns a couple property that this person's worried. It looks like they were house hacking, and they're living in uh, Massachusetts, and they have uh, I think it was a two family house. And basically, they're worried they're going to lose their house yeah. because the other person's – they're de dependent on that rent coming in. Right. And it hasn't been coming in sure. during the pandemic. Yep. And they're very worried about that. Yeah. Um, so Don't get me started on that topic. Well, I'm not. He can go on. I will. Hours. And I will go on. <laughs> but uh, by having that separation um, that you're just uh, an occupant or – and that's, this is the management. This is the system. It helps uh, alleviate that confrontation. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I personally like to separate. Sure. Yeah. So there you go. A couple, couple of different strategies there. Um, you know, the idea is you want to you want to play to your strengths. You want to kind of do a little self analysis and, and also uh, not be afraid to pivot. If you do something one way and say, "Gosh, you know, here I didn't like that experience. Here's how I want to do it going forward." Right. You know, change out of out of what you got comfortable with or you know didn't really work for you. Analyze these things and make changes to it. Yep. Um, so that was a it was a great question. And did you do they have your contact information? So once again, you know, we do rent regular properties out all over the place. So we're, you know, aside from house hacking, uh, all of our, none of, not a single tenant, I think one single tenant managed to get it out of, over the years. You know, I can't get regular people to keep my phone number, you know, like the women, like women. Yeah, sure. Uh, I knew that I was going to walk right into that. 
But uh, this one one tenant actually managed for like ten years now to somehow keep my my cell phone number. So uh, otherwise, everybody, you know, they all are coached and trained um, the importance of how to follow and why why it's important to follow our procedures. Right. Um, so we don't really we don't get annoying tenant calls at eleven o'clock at night. Somebody talking about a neighbor conflict or stuff like that. Uh, it's not an issue for us. And we have a lot of a lot of properties. Yeah. Um, let's move on. I see uh, Victoria popped in saying, uh, what's a balloon payment? And um, so, yeah, the, the, real simple. Uh, basically, if you have a uh, mortgage. Well, some are oh. some are bigger than others. Uh, the, the, the balloon payments for helium balloons are going to cost way more than the ones that just uh, oh you see God. what I did. Yeah, I, you know, that's, I wanted to jump in before you got with your whole thing. Yeah. yeah. Let, let me tell you the real facts. OK. <laughs> Uh, so the balloon payment is often is when you're getting a loan for say a hundred thousand dollars from the bank, it's a mortgage for your house and they might amortize. So they'll set up your payment structure over a 20 year period or 30 year period. Often you'll hear 30 year periods, uh, but there might be a balloon payment in 10. And that basically means, uh, in 10 years you'll have made you know, payments and yeah. some of it will go on the principal. Often they, you know, they front end it. So they so they, Front load it, it's calling, so they actually pay mostly interest at first. I said that. But at that 10 year mark, basically you have to pay whatever the principal is left. Often people then refinance or something like that right. at that point in time. Um, but that is basically what the balloon payment is, is the big payment yeah. that's been you know, blown up, so to speak. So the idea is to never get to that big balloon, that big chunk payment at the end uh, by just refinancing and once again, taking out another 20 or 30 year. Exactly. Yep. Uh, so that's what most people do uh, with those. Uh, all right. So oh, yeah, you're welcome, Aaron. We appreciate uh, your question and definitely appreciate you being here as part of the channel and part of the broadcast. Yeah. Thank you, buddy. Um, he was, uh, so he, I was just trying to see what his, I think he had another question. I don't know how to. Yeah, I don't, he doesn't. It's a Wayne popped up one thing. What is contract buying? So we're, again, guys, we are in the subject of house hacking. Um, so it was, <laughs> we want to, we want to, we appreciate all the different comments. And, uh, and questions we're getting on YouTube, on our YouTube live stream. By the way, TikTok people were over here uh, reading off comments on our house hacking live stream that are getting into <laughs> contract buying. Uh, but uh, that's from Wayne. Wayne, thank you very much for being part of the broadcast. Please consider clicking the like button uh, and subscribing. Yes. Um, but so I would definitely. Jump into it. Well, contract buying? Yeah. I mean, are, now are we talking note? Buying, it's a little. You know what? I, you're right. about wholesale. I assumed wholesale, but you're right. It, it could, could be, be no buyer. So I mean, we do talk about wholesale a lot, and yep. that is a great um, strategy, not just to make some money with very little risk involved, but it may be a great way to acquire your first multifamily house that you could use for a house hack. So uh, this I'm, is, yeah, I'm guessing that's what he's probably talking about yep. because it was referenced earlier. But yep. yeah, I mean, basically, the simplest thing is is finding someone, a wholesaler. They're typically called. They're putting a house um, under contract, a property under contract, land under contract, whatever it might be. And what that really means, just what, what that means by putting yeah. it under contract. So when somebody puts something under contract, I'll go up to an owner of a property, I'll knock on the door and I'll say, hey, you want to sell your house? And he's like, not really, no. You know, and I said, oh, please. And he's like, oh, okay, fine. Wow, right? that's it, Real easy, <laughs> super easy, guys. Works like this every time. And then I take out a pen and I write up a, a contract. I said, okay, Bob agrees to sell Kev this house. Five dollars. He does not do that. We actually use real contracts, <laughs> and I don't usually buy them for five dollars. But uh, so now it's under contract. We've got an agreement to purchase uh, this house from him, and I say, you know what? Eh, I don't really want to buy this house after all. Tell you what, I know this dude Matt. He'll buy anything. What a sucker! Hey Matt, <laughs> uh, you know that house down at by, that, uh, that down on one two three Fake Street over there? Fake Street. Oh, yeah, yeah. Tell I you what. Fake Street. Um, are you interested in buying it? I can get I can get you that house for seven bucks. Uh, I'll take six. Six dollars. That's a great deal. You got it. Six dollars. Deal. So that guy, Bob, he sold the house for five dollars. So I get the contract? Yeah, you, right, you bought you. the contract. Matt bought this house for six bucks because I made a dollar. Bob made the five that he wanted for his house. Exactly. That's selling contract. And now I'm gonna go sell that house for ten dollars. Well, maybe you keep you might keep doing it, or maybe <laughs> maybe you know what, you're gonna actually fix it up. Or oh you're right, and I'm gonna live in one and then I'm gonna rent out a couple of the other bedrooms. Sure, there you go. Boom, shakalaka. I like it. Shakalaka. Boom, shakalaka. Wow. All right, so that's that's a century contract buying. I hope that helps a, a little bit there. Um, what are your utilities? Uh, what are your opinions about utilities? Who pays? Also, how do you market your rental so it's just as appealing as listing that doesn't that includes utilities if you're done? That's an interesting question. Okay. So what are you wait, so let me read that. What are your opinions on about utilities? Who pays? 
Also, how do you market your rental so that it's just as appealing as a listing that includes utilities? If, if yours does. does. Okay. That's so I'll, I'll let you take that one because that's kind of more your uh, forte. So again, let's stick with the, the subject of house hacking here as, as, a, as an idea, because again, we really want to keep making this video about house hacking so we can keep directing, especially the younger folk. Have and by the way, if it. you guys have not hit the like button, do me a favor, hit that like button. You yeah. can actually exit out. If you're on your phone, exit out of the chat. Uh, and you just hit the uh, exit button there and then hit that like button. Hopefully it gets out to more people. Yeah, pretend like, don't pretend like your fingers are broken. Do it, folks. Come on, help us out over here. Yeah, no, but seriously, your click might be the click that helps the next person know about this channel and this video and might turn their life in an awesome direction. And it's all because you clicked a button. So go ahead and do that. All right, <laughs> so what are your opinions about utilities? Who pays? So let's talk about this because we, you know, we did go back and forth on including utilities and stuff. I love it. I freaking love including utilities. Dude, really? He hates including utilities. Hell yeah. That and freaking appliances. And I'm not going to lie. I also <laughs> hate including utilities because I love what we do. And I also hate very much what we do. Um, so here's the breakdown of this. Let's talk about it as, as a landlord, including, we'll say just heat and hot water. Those are the common ones yep. in a separate apartment. So you're renting an apartment, a three bedroom apartment to some people and you decide for yourself, do you want to include utilities or do you want to not include utilities? Now, sometimes you have to. All right. So, for instance, if you have a 16-unit building that has one heating system that feeds the whole building, yeah. guess what? You're yeah. including You're your including the heat and hot water because you, there's no way you can break down individually how much it costs for each person. It doesn't work like that. And in Massachusetts, by the way, as far as water utility, often you are including it because there often is one water meter. You technically can separate it by actually after that water meter, you so, basically subdividing it. Right. Um, some, it's called some metering, uh, but then you actually have to still pay the water bill and then you have to bill them for it. And yeah. in Massachusetts, honestly, it's a nightmare. So, uh, <laughs> so often, you know, we'll say, let's say this often a, a, a home is heated by a gas heating system and a gas hot water system. And that home, that apartment has its own individual gas meter. So you can make the utilities be something that the tenant has to provide. They got to pay their own gas. They can heat their own apartment. Or not, I don't care. I mean, they have to, well, usually they have to follow heating season requirements. So yeah, yeah, yeah. they're they're not allowed to just, as we've had happen, turn the heat off and take a vacation, vacation. for a month and to save a couple of bucks of a heating bill because they'll come back and the whole apartment is frozen solid. Um, hopefully only frozen solid as opposed to the pipes bursting I mean, and the whole sure. thing is flooded. Sure. Um, so I actually do, inst even still, when you have the ability for the tenant to pay the utilities, I love to include heat and hot water uh, as part of the rental. And I, I don't know if anybody knows why I, I love to do that. Does any, do you think anybody here, uh, maybe here? Tick, TikTok, <laughs> TikTok people, jump over to YouTube so you can jump in. Is anybody out there in YouTube land on the chat right now, why would I want to include heat and hot water in an apartment rental? Why would I want to do that? I mean, it is stupid, right? Because I'm paying a gas bill for that. So. Well, you're hoping to profit from that gas. Oh, you're guessing. giving it away. What? what? All right. Really? So I mean, you're 100 percent right. I am hoping to profit from it, but that doesn't seem right. right. How do I know how much it's going to? Well, you're you're taking historical data. Okay. And I'm guessing, and you're averaging it out over a 12 month or two year period that you had, and you're trying to figure out. Okay, well, if I at least rent a you know a little bit more, I should actually make a profit. It's pretty darn close. So think of it this way. Yeah, absolutely. So the city apartment's a thousand bucks with nothing included. And that's what the market rate is. That's what your market is everywhere around you with nothing included. I go ahead and I start including more stuff in that apartment. Of course, that commands a higher price, right? I should charge more for it. Yep. You buy a fully loaded car with leather and a sunroof, you're paying more than a car with power, with the crank old windows and yep. stuff like that. It might right? be more attractive and more, more people might be interested because, oh, wow, I don't have to worry about another bill. Right. Right. There you go, too. So you make things more convenient for them. You're going to include those utilities. You know what? Maybe somebody had a tough past and maybe left the uh, gas company hanging, can't get an account for themselves. So they'll select your apartment. Maybe that's not their best kind of people you want to rent to. I don't know. I was going to say, if they're skipping out on other bills, why would you expect them to pay yours? But when you start including more stuff in an apartment, especially if you're house hacking, if you're including more, you can charge more. I mean, let's face it. That's generally how, how things work. So um, maybe I charge instead of a thousand dollars a month for that apartment with nothing included. I charge twelve fifty a month uh, okay. for that apartment with heat and hot water included. And then what do I do? I uh, in the in the heating months, right? Um, they're racking up a, a gas bill. Now hopefully you have a decent house, 
right? Hopefully, yep. uh, insulated. Yeah, it's insulated. Yep. The windows are decent. You know, you didn't slack as as doing your renovation, fixing the place up. And you know, who knows? Maybe they're maybe they're. I don't know what what what's the heating cost is of a three fe- a three bedroom house, but maybe it's just a few hundred bucks a month. Okay. So you you charge an extra two fifty a month, and that comes close to mostly covering most of your you know your winter season. So what happens in July? There you go. You actually don't have a gas bill typically, or very little. Right. You're not paying for it. There's no heat being used, and well, the, right. the hot water is probably not that. Maybe you know, yeah, exactly. Island or something. Sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, you still have some hot water, but right. yeah. So you're not uh, you're not paying the same. You're not having the same kind of use, but you're still collecting the same amount of rent. Correct. I kind of like that. Potentially, uh, the one big thing I'd say is you can't control the tenant from turning the opening the window. You're not going to tell me somebody putting a frozen hot dog on the thermostat. Yeah, the frozen hot dog, the frozen bag of peas trick. Yep, that's a good one. It, it's true though. I, we've we've had that. Been outsmarting landlords for decades. Damn freaking frozen peas. We're just going to crop this part out of the replay of the rebroadcast. <laughs> of this we don't want the secret getting out of the frozen bag of peas. You guys in the chat, you know what I'm talking about, right? The frozen bag of peas trick. Anybody knows that? So, yeah. I mean, if anyone understands how a thermostat works, it's a very simple thing. Basically, it says, what is the temperature right where that thermostat is? And if it's below whatever it's set to, it will say, oh, okay, I need to turn on the heating system. Right. And it sends a signal to the furnace or boiler or whatever it might be, yep. and it runs. And uh, that's a way for a tenant to, if you like... Because often we'll, you know, we've installed those um, we limiting thermostats. Well, I love the limiting thermostats, yeah. But a frozen peas would uh, trick that out. It would. Now, if you're a small landlord, you're house hacking, you have just a few units, you're, you're paying that gas bill, you know, by hand. I mean, it's not like you have a staff, <laughs> you have 50 or 100 or 1,000 rental units, and it hides, um, you know, hides in, uh, it, in the crowd. It blended, yeah. Right. So I think you'd notice pretty darn quick as, as an owner, as a house hacking owner, that all of a sudden that that gas bill for that unit is six hundred dollars when you know it probably should be like two or three. Yeah, but I guess my concern is if you have a tenant that just basically let's just say they moved in in October, right? And you said, "Yep, heat's included," and now you found out they're tricking out the system. Yeah, and I mean, how do you? You're, you're kind of stuck, right? I mean, how? I mean, at least in Massachusetts, it's not going to be easy to all of a sudden say, "Oh, I'm going to cancel their contract because they're." manipulating the system somehow. No. How do you, you have to prove that. Oh, he put a bag of peas. How do you know? He just takes the bag of peas out when you go to inspect right. or whatever it might be. Or so, they, they actually take the thermostat off the wall. We, better yet. And then just put just the jump. wires together. You're just giving away all the tricks, Matt. Get got it. Jeez. People are going to watch this. <laughs> stuff. Don't share this with any tenants, you know, um, <laughs> I'm just saying. so you got to stay one step ahead. There are, you know, for every, why I including it. Come on, dude. I, I will say if you notice, you know, pay attention. If you notice the heating bill somehow, you know, has shot up, you then you got to start doing something, but think about it. Why would somebody do this? Why would somebody feel the need to, uh, you know, put the fro do the frozen bag at peas trick or, you know, why would they feel the need? Maybe something's going wrong with the heating system and it's not working properly or, or they're you're from being Costa Rica stingy. and they love it 90 degrees all the time. You might be right. <laughs> He's 100% right. Sometimes people just expect that it's okay to have their house heated to 80, 85 degrees. And when a landlord supplies the rent, uh, the, the heat the as part of the rent, um, you know, house hacking is great. I think that's an awesome idea. Um, if you're going to be living there, that gives you a little bit, maybe a little bit more ability to control these situations so they don't yep. blow up in your face. But if you're not living there, um, they, the tenant might think, you know what, it's not fair that my landlord doesn't let me have full control. They said heat's included. Right. So in the beginning, setting, setting expectations, expectations. Yeah. putting the stuff in writing, letting them know, we're going to give you full control. I do this all the time for us. We're going to give you full control over your heating system. Some people like it a little bit cooler. Some people like it a little bit warmer. So heat's included here. You can crank it all the way up into the 70s. You know, I know growing up, I didn't have the ability to go touching that thermostat. I think most people didn't. Yeah, exactly. So I say, listen, you can crank it up to the 70s. I think we max it out at like 72. Uh, and honestly, that's pretty cozy. I mean, that, that most people don't at all complain that 72 is not warm enough in there. Really? I, no, so how, how, how often have we ever heard, well, it doesn't feel like 72. We get that. We do get that. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, what do you want? How do you respond to that? We, it doesn't feel like 72. I don't know what to tell you. The thermostat says 72 degrees. It, it, and in some cases, actually, oh, it, it, it ran a little bit longer, too. So it, it shut off and it right. 72, it might have a but it was still, right, yep. you get the differential going. Um, but so making sure, yeah, I mean, you can't, you, you know, some of the stuff you have to, you have to just kind of troubleshoot. But again, if you're making more money on it, this becomes 
some time spent for money coming in. It's kind of like work. It's it's an income. And honestly, if time. you're house hacking, often you're going to have more you'll know, more eyes on the property. You're going to be oh, yeah. there often. You're going to probably see that more quickly. So you more likely can actually control that right. and actually profit well from it. So I would I, say I, agree. I could get on board yep. if I was house hacking yep. to include it. So for instance, I include it with my Airbnb, of course. It's well, kind yeah. of part of it. Yeah. Um, but so there, I would agree with that. But personally, from like once you start getting out of that, sure. I am so against Well, we've had a lot of experience with that. We have uh, we've experienced with people that, uh, and on our TikTok, we showed it as well, in October, November, getting into December. People that just leave their air conditioners in the window all year round, which yep. obviously is not weather tight. We spent big bucks making sure our home is safe, weather tight. Oh, triple, triple pane, pane windows, windows, my favorite things, right? And uh, and then you leave the window open all year round, and you stick a, a drafty metal box that that pushes air through. Yep. You know, uh, or you know, you they just leave the windows open because they want fresh air. I mean, I get it. But again, think about this, guys. Growing up, did you did you come home from a snow day or from school when school gets canceled because you had a blizzard out there and you just chill with the door open for half an hour so you guys get fresh air? No, what's the first thing you hear? Close the door. What are you, live in a barn? Live in a barn. Heat ain't free. No, I mean, it, right? It, the expectation should be to handle and, and uh, be responsible, yep. you know, with your property. Nobody's going to, nobody's going to freak out if you open the door, open a window and, you know, air out some burnt toast or, you know, do whatever. But if you're living like that with windows it open, right, you know, I don't even cook. Come on, here we could. And, uh, you know, and constantly blowing heat out. You know, you're going to have a tenant that you're not going to want to be sticking around with. You don't want to, that tenant's going to want to, you know, going to want to have them move on uh, right. pretty quickly. Um, so there's lots of different ways to do it. There is an opportunity there. Better if you're house hacking because, like we were saying, you're more present and you're able to have the ability to, you know, kind of kind of play the game of chess when it yeah. comes to that. Um, let's move on. Let's see what else we got here. Did they pick up... <laughs> He must be referring back to a comment. So thanks, by the way, Wayne. Uh, I'm assuming you're referring back to a comment, uh, to, to, to a topic we had when we were at one of our properties and I was talking about some bad behavioral tenant uh, issues and stuff like that. And, um, so I don't know. Actually, it's a great question. I will follow up. It's Monday and I didn't, I had a very busy morning, so I didn't get to go to the property. I'm oh gonna, my God. I'm going to be checking that out. We need to know about the poop. We got it. I think everybody's <laughs> like, whoa, this took a weird transition. Ah. <laughs> uh. What's the best way to get the value out of my home? VA loan, four hundred fifty outstanding. Find a value. Uh, I live there. One unit in the basement pays half the mortgage. Oh, so he's doing a great house. Hack. That's right. I love to see that. Fantastic. So honestly, it's fantastic. So I mean, I think the best way is talking to like a local credit union or a local bank and doing a HELOC, so a home equity line of credit okay. on that um, fifty thousand, one hundred thousand dollar value difference you have right there. Uh, often if you're living there, they might give you actually, uh, if you shop around, there are some banks that will do a hundred percent LTV. So you could literally get a line of credit or home limited line of credit for a hundred grand, which you could leverage hopefully to buy another property. Now okay. be careful. Don't be going buying boats and vacations like this guy would like to. Uh, no, we're talking about, they don't so, let me go to Disney world. It's no, like, we don't No, yeah, Or Vegas. Uh, they let me go to Vegas. <laughs> that stuff's encouraged in Vegas. It's discouraging. Things. I know. But uh, I definitely think a home equity line of credit, talking to local banks might be the best way to do it to get the best LTV yeah, sure. and some of the best rates. And that will give you access to that capital that you can leverage, hopefully, wisely into buying more uh, value property like you're doing with your house hack. That's awesome. Though. I love yeah, that. I love hearing that feedback. Thanks, That's by the way, awesome. for sharing. One of the things I will tell you is anything else you can do with the property itself uh, to either build value in it or produce more money. So I think we were mentioning it earlier, but you know, uh, coin op laundry, it's way easier to deal with that if you're a hands-on uh, house hacker than it is. We've tried the coin op laundry in some of our properties where we don't live there. Well, yeah, or honestly, I don't, I mean, I don't know if you have a family or whatever, if, you ha if you're leveraging the whole first floor, it sounds like you have a basement unit. Yeah. Uh, if you have extra rooms and you don't mind having roommates. A roommate. Look at Airbnb being those other rooms. Yeah. I mean, that can be an extra room uh, money in coming in, at least for the short term, uh, which would maybe you know pay for the whole mortgage. Yeah. And then you can uh, eventually leverage that property into buying you know, you know yourself another property and kind of yeah. continue it, that out. Think about any other amenities you can possibly add. And I wouldn't charge those amenities as a separate thing uh, to the tenant. So maybe... I mean, I know it might be crazy, but think about including Wi-Fi, you know, uh, internet uh, Wi-Fi access for the tenant's apartment. You can probably very easily do that from your own, 
but you're not going to want to charge the tenant their rent plus fifty dollars a month Wi-Fi phone charge. At least not in Massachusetts. I don't well, know if other states might be doing different, but yeah, in right. Mass you can't. You, there's very limited what you can charge. Right. But what you could do is simply just renegotiate the rent, and so instead of renting it for ten uh, for a thousand dollars, renting it for ten fifty. Uh, now and it includes this amenity, high speed internet, or right? Exactly. Maybe some off street parking comes with it. Uh, and well. once again, they're thinking it's probably value because if maybe they go to Comcast or whatever your high speed yeah, internet right. access is, it's hundred bucks. Right. Well, you're you're already using it anyway. You might as well act, give them access to it. So you're actually offsetting that cost as well. So I like right. that idea. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So all those kind of things. Again, same kind of things with pets. People are real down on having pets. Oh my god, don't have pets. They'll destroy your property. Yada yada yada. Listen, tons of our tenants have pets and very small percentage of them actually do any critical damage to the property. We're talking significant. Oh, structural damage all the time. Those dogs. The structural dogs. beams. My, first of all, yeah, I know, right? Dogs <laughs> are just sitting there shaking the house apart. Uh, no, I mean, my, my bunny rabbit does more damage than most of the pets we have at our property. No, you're going to have bad pet owners. Definitely going to be the case. You're going to have a bad pet owner that doesn't clean up after the pet. There's you know, the smell, especially if you're dealing well, with carpets. Also well, I think the other thing is, especially in multifamily house, uh, my biggest thing with pets is, you know, quiet enjoyment of the other tenants. Big time. And that's yeah, a hard thing. People or don't think about that. People right. don't think about it. They all think about pet odors. And right. And, and, and don't get me wrong. You know, if you have carpet, which we try to stay away from carpet, staying in the carpet, making a change all the time, that sucks. Yeah. But the biggest thing I would is liability. If that dog bites one of the other tenants, guess what? They're not going to, most likely they'll sue the tenant, of course, but often we're going to get named yeah. and we're going to get sued. Yeah, you're now. the one with the homeowner's insurance policy. Yep. And the Amazon driver that uh, claimed the chihuahua nipped him in the heel, you know, same thing. You're the one getting sued, even if it was from one of your tenants' uh, dogs that, uh, you know, got to him. Um, but, uh, you know, the bottom line is, you know, you could charge extra money for somebody to have a, a, a pet you know, allowance in the property. Well, normally, we, you know, places charge a pet fee. I hear this all the time. Yep. Again, you can't do that here. Regardless, just call it rent. So maybe you're going to add $50 a month to cover the cost, uh, uh, you know, to, as a as a extra cost right. for if they want to have a cat or a dog. Uh, and you're thinking to yourself, is listen, that's $600 over the course of their of their lease. Yep. Um, that that covers a lot of potential possible damage. I mean, so yeah, exactly. You know, so chances are it's profit for you, and chances are it'll give you a larger pool of people to choose from. Now, maybe what about being furnishing the place? Now you're actually furnishing the whole place, similar like an Airbnb style. 100%, now yeah. you're now you're offering someone, you know, they're gonna have a bed, a TV, whatever. Why bed. not? Someone else is doing that. Yep. Someone else is legit. So think about it, guys. Renting a furnished apartment, that, that's incredibly stupid, right, for a landlord to do. Why? Because tenants trashed a place. Oh, my God. And we're sitting here. I'm going to sit here to advocate for why people do this. Because guess what? You know how many of my tenants will move into an apartment a day as I get the lease signed with them? I'm getting a call from a company like Rent-A-Center. Uh, I don't know if Rent-A-Center is nationwide. This is the company that's basically renting furnishings to your tenants. You're in the business of renting stuff, guys. Rent some furniture. And what's the worst? I mean, rent a center, you, but in the, in the term of, by the time you finished renting that couch, you paid for it like four times. Right. Well, again, in mass, we can't rent the furniture. So Absolutely. It's just including in the rent. So it. It basically, it's a fully furnished apartment. It's now going to be, yeah, 1300 as opposed to $1,000, yep. whatever it might be. Absolutely right. He's ring, ding, 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 ding. I just want to make sure. I mean, what's the, it's, right. check so, your local laws. So the more you're stuffing into stuff, the more you can command a higher price. And again, as a house hacker, you're going to have an easier time managing this because how does furniture get wrecked and destroyed and stuff like that? Well, one of the ways, wild, crazy parties, right? You're there. You know if you have a tenant that's kind of doing the wild, crazy party scene, you know? Yeah. And if you are, you can take steps to lock that down before it costs you all your furniture. And the bottom line is you're still holding security deposits on this stuff. So, uh, well, again, depending on your state, how you set this stuff up. But here we can take a security deposit equal to one month's rent. Now, it's not going to replace everything in the apartment. No, of course not. It's never going to cover everything if everything gets obliterated. You do have your own insurance. You have your deductibles. You have a lot of options. The tenant will hopefully have renter's insurance if you've I Highly recommend you yep. recommend it. Once again, we can't require it in Massachusetts, but we highly recommend it. <laughs> we got to move. We, uh, we are restricted over here. Yeah. Even in, in Connecticut, we can't. No, I know. I know. Yeah. I know. Uh, so lots of different ways to do it. Now, why do I like this? And we're and again, house hackers, pay attention. I hope you guys are taking notes. I hope everybody that's ever thinking about house hacking, especially you TikTok people, what's up in the back? Um, take a second, find us over here on YouTube so you can jump into the comments with us. Why do I like it when you include more stuff as the rent uh, versus having stuff separate from the rent? I'll tell you, Matt might not know off the top of his head, but I'm going to tell you right here. 
if somebody doesn't pay my separate fees, my water and sewer, my pet fee, my apartment oh, yeah. furnishing rental fee, uh, what do I do? I can kick them out for non-payment of rent, right? Well, no, because they paid the rent that month. They paid their thousand right. dollars, but they didn't pay one of these other seventeen other fees that I'm charging. Exactly. So that's a separate eviction case. It's not an eviction case. It's a, wouldn't it be a lease maybe violation? a lease violation? Yeah, come maybe, on, right? maybe. Yeah. Good luck, dude. Good luck taking that to court and getting that to <laughs> That's pass. It, I'm going for it. What I would tell you is it's definitely a small claims court case. You know, okay. so you're going to get a, a nice, you know, make you feel warm and cozy judgment judgment against them for the for the six hundred dollars that you're never going to collect off this dirt bag that's screwing you in the first place. So do what I what I suggest. Make this stuff all part of your rent, if for not because of complying with state laws and all this other stuff, but because if they don't pay a portion of it, anything that they're short on is a non-payment of rent violation, and you can bring that forward to court. You can also help them, so they'll have a consequence. There's nothing wrong with having a consequence for bad behavior. Of course, right? I think that's important. But you can also help them, instead of imposing a doom and gloom scenario, which you never win as, as doing an eviction, help them get rental assistance when things when they get behind on stuff so that might be a great way to go you can help them through so many different organizations yep all right i like this when we were talking about the dogs destroying the property exactly i was clifford. thinking the same thing clifford with this <laughs> i love it yeah uh, uh thanks by the way for hopping into the youtube comments everybody from tiktok that's popped over to youtube thank you very much for coming and checking us out and saying hello what's your limitations for pets pet size type amount it's changed so much over the years. I, I honestly say, don't we, recall anymore. Well, yeah, we have to. We can, and also we have to be careful because uh, in Massachusetts we can't really restrict too much, right? I mean, that's so our like the general. I mean, our insurance doesn't have any kind of exclusions for different breeds, but I right. hear that all the time. People are like, "No, no, no! I heard you can't have it if you have, you know, X, Y, Z type of dog." And I'm like, "Yeah." So ours doesn't really have that as an issue, but um, yeah. So we, you can create a policy, but here's the thing: is Create a policy and then enforce it properly that's, that's, and fairly. That's, yeah, you need to treat all of your tenants equally. Yeah, you like cats and you don't like dogs in your units? Cool, no problem. I feel like all of my units can uh, can have a cat, you know, or... Uh, you could also st structure it something where, for instance, all my single family homes or my single are treated family. like this way. Right. But all my, you know, 16 unit buildings, because obviously it's I, a little different know, than, a, you know, know, that yeah. is treated this way. Yep, I, I think agree. that's, you know, so you can create two different policies. Well, no, it is but the policy. You, it but is yeah. the policy, but you need to be consistent. Yep. Good, and then make sure that that's, you know, uh, unless, of course, they're asking for what's called a reasonable accommodation. Right. Which and is that's a, where your exception to the rule. Oh, yeah. Somebody seeing eye cat, you know. Yep. Or the yeah. gerbil. Seeing eye gerbil. Sure. You never know. But, uh, yeah, so... You know, people are going to pull the old, the old, you know, it's my my therapy animal, my service animal. You got to navigate that. But um, basically, you know, make sure they're also following um, some your local laws. I mean, dog right. licensing and stuff like that. Um, yeah. You know, remember uh, and really encourage them to have insurance because when a claim gets made, whether it happened or not, you still, you know, somebody got uh, allegedly bid on your property, you're still going to hear about it. I also make sure uh, most uh, states uh, or cities I know this is make sure the pets are registered with the, uh, the city. Right. hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. That, that's something that we also require all yeah. of our owners. to. And you know what? Own. Bad pet owners won't do that, honestly, most yeah. of the time. And well, they'll, they'll often the cities else. cost a little bit of money. Too. Of course it does. Of course so it does. So it also creates a barrier that if they actually really want to be a good pet owner, they're going to pay that, you know, whatever it's 50. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, they'll they jump through the hoop yep. that they should have done anyway. And uh, that'll help you weed out the better pet owners from, exactly. that, from the not so great ones. Absolutely. Yep. What state are these guys in? State of insanity. Permanent insanity. Uh, we're in Massachusetts. Please, I'm somebody happy. get us the hell out of here. Uh, it, 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 I always say if you can survive in Massachusetts dealing with rental property, you'll thrive anywhere else. Uh, yeah, she already got it. Uh, oh. Go ahead. Do you want to read it? What do you guys think about investing in MUPs that are in different states? I've been following this guy on IG, so Instagram, that has uh, never seen a single one of his units in person. So out of state, I mean, out of state investing can work. Uh, you, I think the key is having a really good team. So uh, obviously it doesn't relate to house hacking because you're going to see the place you're going to live. Right. Uh, but uh, I would say out of state investing can be a great way to go. Uh, but you really want a good team. And I would more worry about actually evaluating that it's a good cash flowing property and that you evaluate the team and make sure that they're going to do a really good job on, well, it'd be managing it, renovating it, whatever it is. And I think 
more likely than not, especially because if you're looking at, you know, from afar, especially starting out early, trying to manage a rehab project mm. from afar, that's a lot of work. And that, that, that takes a lot of um, trust in those people that they're doing it right. They're pulling the permits. I mean, you even if they do a video, you can never catch everything. Right. Did, did they do the floor joists right? Did they do the proper plumbing? Even though often they're, you know, they pull permits, it's great. The inspectors can miss things too. Mm. So I think I would be very apprehensive to do a rehab project starting out from afar, but if you're doing like a turnkey property yep. where sure. everything's been fully renovated from a very you know vetted good company, I would you know be open to doing that kind of stuff. Nice, nice, folks. If you if any of these answers, these questions people are asking uh, seem like they might help you, please stick around on our channel by hitting the subscribe button and ringing the notifications bell. Also, take a second and find the like button. It's in there somewhere. Look harder uh, and uh, and drop us a like right now on our live stream. So more people will be able to see this video. The more you interact with it by saying hello in the comments, dropping likes, or even, I don't know, God forbid, sharing this video around, guys, the more uh, other people will be able to find it. Like you, TikTok. Come on. <laughs> yeah, TikTok. If you're still there lurking from the TikTok shadows, double tap the screen a whole bunch. Just go ahead and like tap Matt on the head a whole bunch, and uh, that'll help more people see our TikTok feed. They'll be able to then find us over here on YouTube as well. Yep. Who's calling? That's probably just my mom. I don't know. No, no, it's, no, it's no, no, it's not. <laughs> All right, uh, you want to go take this one? Uh, yeah, when I be able to take out a loan on a complex and rent out the other rooms for money, um, loan on complex a and rent out other rooms for money. Yes, I mean basically yes. If it's a property, almost certainly you can take out a loan against it. Uh, and <laughs> renting out other rooms, whether it's a single family or a multi-family property, and you're renting out the other units, that is in in essence of what, what I just house hacking be, is. Just to be careful, I'm not sure if you're talking like a boarding house situation that you want to be careful about doing. If well, so, if Airbnb is allowed, that you right. can possibly do it that way. But you want to check with your local laws that make sure that boarding houses, like for instance, the oh, Springfield, we have, we have Mass. another horrible law around here. Well, I'm yep. saying in Springfield, Mass, it's not a state yep. law; it's just specific no, to I your know. city. Is that you cannot have any more than uh, three unrelated parties living together. Right. So it's something just to be mindful of. Uh, Isn't and that the dumbest? My God. I mean, I'm sure that there was a reason why it got set up at one point in time. But you know. seriously, I don't know if you guys if you guys caught that or you understand what what we just talked about. But you can't in the city that we live in. It's, it's the third biggest city in the state. This isn't like you can't have more than three unrelated people living in the same house. Right. Uh, there are some big houses here. There's some freaking Victorian house. There's five thousand six. There was one house I was. I was I, I called it my uh, Kevin's oh, Manor. Kevin's God, Manor. The shipping a long, manor. No, Kevin's Manor a long yep. time ago. And uh, yeah, and um, 6,000 square feet. This place is huge. Yeah. had like six marble fireplaces. That's the crazy. basement ceilings were like 10 feet. Oh, they were huge. It was crazy. Yeah. And they literally were telling me I can't live there with three of my buddies. I couldn't Only live there. Two. right. I like I couldn't have like a girlfriend and then like have two roommates living in in, in this huge huge well, eight bedroom house. Well, you married that girlfriend. No, no, okay. <laughs> I mean, that's not. That's just weird, man. What are we talking about here? No, but seriously, I mean that was that just was saying, such a related. dumb that's such a dumb restriction that they placed uh, on a property. I wouldn't even see these people. That's how big this place was. You wouldn't even see them half the week. Uh, but they wouldn't allow it. So uh, always, always, always check your local stuff. You never know what kind of local city ordinance, bizarre like that, could get you shut down. Often what I would recommend is in your city, go to the local like landlord association. Yeah. Uh, there's often one in, you know, maybe not in that city, but around there. And talk to the other landlords. Get to know the laws in your area. Those ones often people miss up. And I, I found uh, many landlords that are small-time landlords that yeah. don't realize that. Or they'll have a legal third unit that they don't realize is illegal because it's only zoned for two family. But they had this attic that was finished and it has done, it has two means of aggressors, but they rent it out. And that can be – get so if you're house hacking, make sure you know what you're buying because sure. if you're renting out that third floor thinking it's A-OK -okay to rent out yep. and you get found out that it's not, you could have triple damages. And oh. what that means basically yeah. is – let's just say you rented it out for a year and that, per, and that was a total rent of a – Ten thousand dollars. Now you could owe that person potentially thirty thousand dollars plus attorney fees. It's and yeah. your own attorney. Yeah. Oh, you could be looking at losing that house. We we've seen everything, and the messed up thing is, we actually had a property that was a uh, it was a three family house. Three family. I did I did air quotes with three fingers. It was a three family house, um, and it was taxed as a three family house for many many decades. Yep. It had two legal means of egress kitchen, bathroom. It was, it was a normal three family house. 
um, until one day it wasn't. It, yep. The, uh, the inspector came through and it's like, well, nope, this is not a legal unit. It's never, so it, it never got rezoned. So it had to actually get appealed to the zoning board. So everything was done right. They, you know, for the most part, yeah. uh, met code, yep. uh, building code, but it didn't meet the zoning board and therefore it was not allowed to be rented out. I mean, they were all too happy to yeah. take oh, tax payments. Though. Oh, and by the way, of course, then when you ask them, well, okay, can I get reimbursed for those you know, prior taxes? Take my money back. Nope. Please. No. No. Oh, yeah. Not, not happy at all. They, they were like, no. Like, <laughs> Wait a second. So you, you'll be happy to make me make me pay. It wasn't an optional thing. It wasn't right. like, we'll pay for it as a two or as a three. We had to pay for it as a three. But then when we started using it as a three, they were like, what? <laughs> kidding me. Yeah. So you got to be careful with this kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, always, always, always do your due diligence on this stuff. And even once you've done that, you never know what might come out. So, yeah. All right, so Aaron's asking another question. In New York, people can uh, claim animals and emotional support animals. Yes, landlords are not allowed to refuse to ask for occupation. Bad people ruin it for people like that. I completely agree. I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to go into too much of that yeah, stuff, but that's already, a whole other topic. Yeah, no, yeah. We, we hit on a lot of that already on a house hack video here. So, yeah, I appreciate it. Good comment, and we, we sympathize with that 100%. How to find a team out of state? Uh, referrals. Referrals, definitely. Uh, I check out biggerpockets.com. Uh, that might be a great resource. Check out the forums there. Yep. It's all free. And you can really talk to other landlords in that area. You might find other property management companies. Maybe call around, find you know, yep. find property managers in that area that have you know good systems and been there for a long time. Yeah. Local local investor groups on things like Facebook, you know, where you can uh, you can join a group for that area that you want to invest in. Yep. Ask for some referrals there. That might be a couple of different ways. Referrals are a great way to go. And then, you know, knowing a little bit about, you know, how to kind of vet them a little bit, you know, schedule a time to talk uh, to these companies and have a conversation. You know, how would you handle this? And what do you think about that? Uh, you know, what's your policy on such and such? And Agreed. see if they kind of match your style of how you want to see your properties run. Awesome. Oh, thanks for following us. Thanks, Crow, Diane. That's awesome. Uh, check out this stock. Okay, no, no stocks here. FYI, your TikTok model. Oh, awesome. Just. <laughs> in, my, in the last year, my property was bombarded by house wholesalers. Wow. <laughs> Phone calls, postcards, et cetera. Seems everyone does it now. I agree. I, uh, there's a lot out there because it's gotten easy to do it in the easy way. Yes. And uh, so I actually, I bought a house in uh, Tennessee and I still get calls from VAs, so virtual assistants, all the time trying to buy my property for, of course, half I paid. I'm like, do you understand? I bought this fully renovated. I'm like, yeah. And it's fully, it's fully renovated and rented and cash flowing. And you wanted to pay me half? Right. What, what, what logic? Like, yeah. How do you run your list? Like, I try to literally kind of talk to them. I'm like, help me understand how this even makes sense to you. Right. What, what kind of records did you run? Right. What makes you think I, I would remotely be interested in just liquidating a property in a fire sale. Exactly. That's why I think a lot of wholesalers suck. Yeah. They're not doing property diligence. They're buying quick lists off a list source or something yeah. like that. I, we outdated use a service, lists, yeah, outdated lists. So we use service like PropStream where you can create your own list out of actual data that's yeah. updated routinely. So if you go check the, you know, basically in the description, we have a link to PropStream. Yeah. Uh, Do we have it on it. YouTube? Yeah. Okay. Yep. And so I'd highly recommend checking it out. It's it is a little expensive. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it but, is and it isn't. It's yeah. incredibly cheap for, I mean, geez. Do one you, deal. You do one deal with that sucker yes. and, and it's it paid for, for itself for years. It's not expensive. Yes. Sure. Um, it's, it's expensive to not have it uh, because you're wasting your time if you, if you don't have something like that. It's incredibly powerful. Um, do we still have a, if we, we might still have a promo code with it. So, oh, we if, do. Yep. If, okay. So if, if there's probably so a link it. somewhere, yeah, just find the link in, in our bio. I think TikTok, TikTok people, what's up? Um, find it and download it and put in our promo code. You'll have a week free trial yes. on it. Um, try it out and really tinker with it. Put a couple hours into playing with it. Uh, and I think you're going to be impressed with what it can really do. And that's why Matt said, I don't know how you guys are getting these lists, where you're you know pulling oh. them from. There, it's probably somebody that paid good money for a garbage list yes. that was old or whatever it could have been. You could be creating, cultivating your own lists and working and doing the follow-ups, doing the virtual assistant thing, sending emails, texts, postcards out. Right. Uh, it's become very accessible. You do have to pay for this prop stream thing, um, but 
It's uh, like I said, you can try it for free. If you're going to get into wholesaling or you're really even interested in just, you know, you got a couple hundred bucks to burn and you want to try something out, take a shot, right. give yourself a couple of months of using PropStream and give yourself some time to have sent out some, some emails and do, you, you know, do some follow up. Uh, all you need is one deal and you're going to get hooked on this, that it's an amazing, amazing pro uh, platform. I agree. So we only can take a few more questions. Uh, we do need to head out our actually yeah, next meeting here. So. Oh boy. Okay. Um, Tips on the first time home buyers looking to get into real estate. So are you, it, once again, we were talking about this is the whole episode is house hacking. I think that is the best way to get started. Yeah. If Paul, you're looking for a home buyer. Paul is Paul. dead on. Yeah, yeah, you're right, man. House hacking is a great way to get started getting into real estate. So yes. that would be my tip. Learn about how FHA loans can open so many doors, yep. like up to four of them at one property. Oh my God. Whoa, that's Dad a little, jokes. That's a little FHA humor for you there, Paul. Uh, but seriously, <laughs> the other boys some say? single. No, we, it, it seems like because it's a joke. Yeah, Jesus Christ. No stage presence over here in this guy. No, anyway. No, sorry. Uh, I'm, single I'm all family, about the information. Oh, Jesus. Single family up to four family houses with FHA. <laughs> Live in one unit. Rent the other suckers out to some suckers that'll pay you for them and you're going to make bank on that thing you're going to pay off your mortgage you're going to have almost no living expenses probably have enough money to put in your pocket towards the next property boom uh let's see guys thoughts on cash rate refinance i think it can be uh, a great way to actually as long as you don't overuse it uh so don't strip all your equity make sure you're still cash flowing on the property for your house hack and I better yet would rather not actually, I would just pull out my money that I have invested into the company yeah. or into the uh, business or the, the multifamily house. And I would actually HELOC the rest so that you don't have that consistent interest. Mm -hmm. I'd rather only pay that interest when I use it. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I would highly recommend is for instead of doing the, the full cash out refinance, unless you're leveraging that money into a next investment right away, I would rather leverage in a house hack scenario, the HELOC. Uh, what's the app's name for the list for creating lists and cultivating these things? Prop stream is what we, uh, what we use and tell people yep. check it out. It's yeah. Link is in the description of this video and pretty much all of our videos. Uh, check it out. I highly recommend, and you can make your own list. I was working on creating a list this morning with all these different properties in my area where they, people owned a 50 or more <laughs> units. Uh, and they've owned it for at least 20 years yeah. and they had at least a million dollars in equity. So I kind of created that list. So we're going to go chase down those leads. Yep. But is that a tired, uh, is that what uh, you're thinking? It's not a tired landlord list. I was looking at just um, landlords. Well, I guess you could be tired looking to, you know, basically like 20 years, 20 years that they're looking to get out. I'm, I'd and be so tired, sure. yeah, you're, yeah, you're tired now. Um, <laughs> so yeah, check it out. Everybody, seriously, there's anybody that's watching this broadcast now live or as it gets replayed later. Um, Download it and put the promo code and try it. It is free. You should, if you're remotely interested in real estate, you got to tinker around with this thing and check it out. Even if you're never going to wholesale, you're not going to make somebody an offer on a house. I don't know why. I don't know why you wouldn't, but download it, try it out, see what we're talking about. All right. Take the last question, then we got to head out, guys. Would you recommend using down payment assistance programs? Paul, Yes. I mean, uh, most of these programs are essentially free money. Uh, some of them you might actually have to report your taxes and that mm -hmm. might offset some of that stuff. So check into the ones you're looking at. I mean, Bank of America has a program. Often a lot of uh, local housing authorities have some programs and states have different programs that can help you. I know that Biden's talking about doing some more uh, programs to help everyone get a new home. So if you could leverage free money, why wouldn't you? Yeah, get it while it's printing. All right. I just want to I just want to put this up here because okay. he is dead on right. Thanks for answering our questions and confused of why people aren't sending us more likes on. Thank here. you. Thanks for saying it out loud, Aaron. Where are you people? Click the buttons, hit the likes, hit the subscribes, hit all the buttons that help our channel grow. Exactly, guys. So if you haven't, check out the other videos that we have here uh, and uh, please do us a favor. Check them out, like them, and then share them with other people. And uh, we'll uh, be back on here uh, next Monday. Yeah, we'll probably we'll be doing another one next Monday. We might even put up a little survey or a vote oh, to yeah, see what like about that. topic ideas. So, uh, you know, we love to hear your feedback. Take a second, watch through some of our content on YouTube, and then uh, come back and hit us next week with some questions. We exactly. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. See you, YouTube. Take care.